Hey Rebel Riser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy, and thank you so much for joining me for it. So today we're going to talk about the ticking clone clock, which we have seen little bits and pieces of over the course of the Bad Batch, but it's really coming into focus now in Season 3 of the Bad Batch, especially with the events of Infiltration and Extraction, this two-episode mid-season doubleheader we just had. And before we dig in, I do just want to say thank you so much to the patrons who help support bringing you this daily dose of Star Wars joy through their efforts at patreon.com slash SW7X7. So let's think about what we know about Order 66 in brief, right? So we know that the chips were implanted into the clone troopers, and we can safely assume that they have a shelf life before they would eventually start breaking down. We saw malfunctions starting to happen near the end of the Clone Wars, and we know that from the initial install of the chips to when we are now in the Bad Batch, it's maybe five-ish years or so. I'm saying five years because, you know, at Attack of the Clones to Revenge of the Sith, that's three years, and then we are maybe a year and a half past the events of Revenge of the Sith as we are right now in the Bad Batch, but you also have to allow for a little time before Attack of the Clones when clone production really started in earnest. I mean, you know, the 200,000 clones that Obi-Wan Kenobi found about it in Attack of the Clones, they didn't just magically appear, they were grown, and, you know, it was an accelerated process, of course, but, <laughs> and, you know, it didn't happen overnight, for sure. So the chips, let's just say, for sake of argument, that it's a roughly five-year shelf life, all right? So that's number one. Number two, when the chips are activated, the primary situation for them is that it tells the clones to kill the Jedi or kill anybody who is protecting the Jedi. But what happens when all the Jedi are gone, right? When there's nobody else to attack and nobody existing who could be safely identified as having protected the Jedi. I mean, for one thing, in Bad Batch Season 1, in those episodes where Wrecker's chip finally started to kick in, he attacked members of the Bad Batch because, presumably, they had acted to protect a Jedi, Caleb Doom, in the very beginning of the series. But where we are now, more than a year after the fall of the Republic, there's not really anybody who is protecting Jedi anymore. Like, it's kind of few and far between, basically. Yes, they helped Gunji in Season 2, and so, yeah, maybe <laughs> something could get triggered by that as well. But for the most part, Palpatine's spin had to go from, you know, attacking the Jedi and attacking anybody who was helping the Jedi to attacking anybody who was against the Empire. And there was sort of a logic to it, if you will, because the Jedi were attacking what was the Republic, and the Republic is now the Empire, so yeah, you can sort of make a logical conclusion for that. But that wasn't going to last. And Palpatine must have known this, because why would they start ramping up efforts to create a Stormtrooper army so quickly after the fall of the Republic? It's because the clones would probably see what was going on and start to be unhappy with the way things were. And lo and behold, that's exactly what's been happening. Over the course of the Bad Batch, we've been hearing about clones defecting, people who are not happy with what they are seeing the Republic becoming, what the Empire is developing into, and saying, I don't want to be a part of this. Even with the chips still active and operating inside of them, they're like, yeah, I didn't necessarily sign on for this. But that's only part of the problem for Palpatine. Another part of the problem is the treatment of clones in the aftermath of the rise of the Empire, right? So they've been decommissioned, they've been kicked out of the military service, and yes, there's some Imperial Information Bureau that's gonna resettle them somehow or whatever, but from little bits and pieces here and there that we've gotten over season two of The Bad Batch, we hear that it doesn't sound like the Empire is really doing much for them. And so they're creating discontent amongst all these clones who, by the way, have military training, which is not great for the Empire, basically, because now they're creating, you know, disruption and, you know, disgruntledness amongst a group of very well-trained people who could actually do some serious damage to the Empire if they were able to get themselves together. And not only are they inclined to get themselves together, but they also have a very powerful reason for doing so because they see themselves as brothers. Like there is a 
deep connection that clones have to each other. When they're not being overwhelmed by Order 66 Jedi killing programming, they are you know, very supportive of each other. When Wolf shows up at the monastery and he says, you know, these are clones, not insurgents. And Hilo says they're both. Well, Hilo is one of the few clones that's been trained to work for the Empire through you know, additional conditioning, right? Like, so in the same way that Crosshair had been saying, like, not everybody on Tantus is a prisoner, you know, clone wise. Like, this is one of the examples thereof. And Wolf isn't necessarily a prisoner either, but he is not one of the ones who's been conditioned in that fashion. And then at the end of the episode, after Wolf has let Rex and company leave, he gives orders to go back to the monastery and collect the dead. And, you know, Hilo is shocked by this and says, you know, but, you know, they're insurgents. And Wolf's response is, you know, but they're clones and we owe them that much. And then, of course, there's the stuff that we've been hearing from Omega and now from Rex about how all the clones that are being held a prisoner in Tantus, these are our brothers, and we need to do something about it. We need to rescue them. And it has become a motivating force for them. It's not just something where they're sitting around saying, like, this is terrible, like, you know, we should do something about this. Their actions are working directly for this goal we find out. So that's the other part of the ticking clone clock situation. The first clock had to do with Palpatine only had so long with these chips in order to execute Order 66 and get rid of all the Jedi and anybody who might have been helping them. But now the problem is for Palpatine that he has millions of clones out there that are becoming increasingly restless and dissatisfied with how things went from the Republic to the Empire. And they're going to start organizing and rising up. And so this means that we could actually be seeing something enormous by the end of Season 3 of The Bad Batch. Or at least the seeds of something enormous, right? Like, the ultimate goal may be the liberation of Tantus, but it leads to a larger question of what happens with all of these clones once they are free, and will we have a significant uprising against the Empire in those first few years of the Empire, and is that a new story that's going to be told down the line? So that's what I've got for you on our deep dive episode related to Extraction, which is the seventh episode of Season 3 of The Bad Batch, and that's going to do it for this episode of the podcast. If you enjoy the podcast, please consider leaving a rating or review on your favorite app if you haven't done it already. That helps more people find out about this daily dose of Star Wars joy, so does hitting subscribe or like or follow or join. That's another sign to the algorithms that, hey, this is worth checking out for other people who are searching for Star Wars podcasts. Please also tell your friends if you haven't told them already or tell them again <laughs> and get them to check out the show. Not everybody's heard about it, even though we've been around for almost 10 years. Like, I still find people all the time who are like, that's out there? Yeah, it's Crazy but true, so yes, please do. And even with just $1 a month, $3.27 a month, $5.01 a month, you can help support the creation and production of this Daily Dose of Star Wars Joy over at patreon.com slash SW7X7. That's SW and then the number seven and the letter X and the number seven. And it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode, as always, and may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. Seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.